Hi guys, this is Ratchet Throw, and we are playing Criminal Case Challenge Time, Case 28, for whom the bell tolls. Let's watch chapter 2, and there's Dorgoyen walking past us. Get out of my way! Princess Dorgoyen, we're looking for you. We're here to rescue you. Then don't just stand there. Run! The guard's right behind. Stop right there. Don't you boo, young lady. Great, and I almost got away. So much for that. Excuse us, sir. We're here on behalf of Emperor Lizong. That's right. The Emperor said us to speak with this young lady about a murder. The Emperor sent you? Very well, you may speak with the prisoner, but I'll be watching. Uh, so much for being free. I thought we were going to run and hide. That he wasn't going to catch us. Thank goodness you're alright, Princess Dragonin. Your father sent us to find you. Are you being treated well? They have a harm me, and the bed's actually quite comfortable. And I always wanted to travel to China, but not like this. And our pleasant trees. What's this murder you want to talk about? The princess's captor, Jin Bingshu, was murdered at the opera house earlier today. What? My master is dead? So someone killed that awful brute. Serves him right, if you ask me. Wait, my master was killed at the opera house? Now how did his riverboat get moved to the central canal? He doesn't let anyone touch that boat. That's a good question. Let's go, Kateria. We should, search, we should search that boat. We'll return for you later, princess. We promise. Okay. And a new level. Let's go. Eight seconds left. I'm doing well. I hate the lame princess of Gwony with that guard, Katarina. But her captor's killer could be after her too, so she's safer under lock and key. Now, if the victim moved his riverboat at the opera house, only the killer could have moved it after the murder. This cloth is identical to the victim's robes. It must have been torn during a struggle. We'd better collect those bloodstained beads, they might give us a new lead. And I agree, Katria. Let's switch on that pile of equipment while we are at it. Leave no stone unturned. Alright, let's see what's this. That looks like coffee beans. Now that you collected those beads from the victim's torn clothing, Katrina, let's send them to Tio. Okay. Alright, now let's look through this. A 
spyglass. That's strange, Katrina. You expect to find a spyglass like this on one of those big sailing ships, not amongst a small riverboat's equipment. There's nothing great into the spyglass, but the characters are worn away. A closer look at whatever is written should tell us where this comes from. We want to have a spyglass right here in canal and on a boat and not on a big ship. Let's just dust this. S. Sanchez. Well, we know somebody by the last name of Sanchez. Yes. This engraving is in Chinese, Katrina. It's written in the Roman alphabet. And it reads S. Sanchez. Wait, Santiago Sanchez is that explorer we met in Mongolia. As I recall, Santiago Sanchez was a suspect in the murder of a nomad chief. And now he's connected to another victim. Let's check down Senor Sanchez and find out what's going on. Alright. Long time no see. Well, it has been long. <laughs> ah, Katrina. Channel is la bienvenida. I'm surprised to see you here. A surprise indeed, Senor Sanchez. What are you doing in Zhangjiang? Exploring, of course. China's a wonderful country, especially their food. I can't get enough of these dry jujubes. And how did you end up on Jim Bingers' riverboat? We found him murdered earlier today. What? Jim Bingers has been killed? Que tragedia. I met with Jim Bingshu. He was a fascinating man. For centuries, a person's status in Chinese society has been di dictated by their ancestry. But Bingshu was a self-made man, attaining his wealth and influence by passing the civil exams. Education and intelligence are the new currency, radically altering China's power structure for future generations. So you know nothing about his murder? Or about who might have wanted to harm him? I'd help you if I could, Katarina. But I know nothing. And nothing. What are these bloody beads? Darling, I heard you were confronted by the in the century. Are you alright? I'm fine, Theo. But the sooner we find Jean Bingtrus' killer, the sooner we can rescue your ancestor. Well, those beads go a long way towards doing that. The blood was a batch for the victims, so there's no doubt they were left behind by the killer. But what are they? Was the killer wearing a necklace or a bracelet? Well, that's where my Asian heritage comes in handy. These beads are from jewelry. They're from a handheld abacus. Oh, right, abacus. Yeah. An abacus? You mean those ancient counting frames? Exactly. They were used as a means of quickly making complex calculations. It wasn't uncommon for people to carry portable versions, like an arcade calculator. So, the girl must have been carrying a small abacus at the time of the murder. Now that we know the curious is an abacus, their days of freedom are numbered. We're on a roll now, Katerina. We know the victim was out of the cannon field, so let's take another look around. Okay. All right, let's investigate this cannon field again.
Ah, I couldn't find a teapot. Let's just add another seconds. Oh, there. Look, Katria. The decorative box has a tag addressed to the victim on it. It's the same name that was on Jim Bingdress's bag. I imagine this is some sort of gift, so let's open it up and see what's inside. And look at that statue. It depicts Jim Bingdress Vigil bowing low to the ground. Surely the victim wouldn't have made this figurine himself in such a humble posture. Oh. And I'm like, this looks like a cat, but it's actually somebody bowing. There's a liquid stain on the statue, Katarina. Let's collect a sample for analysis. Okay. Okay, let's unlock the box. Whatever this strange contraption is, Katrina, it was meant as a gift to the victim. What's that supposed to be? Normally, Kai would examine this device, but since he and Penelope are tailing Amon in Mongolia, let's send it to Orlando. Well, let's see if he can do it. Okay, now this stain from the statue. Alright, Katrina, it will be quicker if we put this liquid stuff we close off that statue of the victim under the microscope. Okay. Alright. wine. And who drinks it? That liquid you found on that statue of the victim is rice wine, Katarina. Wait, you're right. The opera said he enjoyed drinking rice wine at the opera house. Could this statue have anything to do with him? Let's seek another audience with, with his majesty. Okay. Part of our intrusion, Your Majesty. But I have some more questions about Jim Bingdress's murder. Are oh, you still investigating that? I would have thought you sold his murder by now. We're not Chinese, we're just foreigners. We're not so fast. We're curious about the statue of the victim. Can you tell us what this means? That statue was a lesson in respect. Venture had become increasingly irreverent, failing to show me the honor I deserve. To begin with, he wasn't paying his land taxes. I know how to use an abacus. I could see he was withholding what he owed me. And lately, he wasn't even bowing properly. I'm sorry, bowing properly? Exactly! Every time he entered the room, Jim Bingo would only bow twice, and his face never even touched the ground. A proper kowtow is there three, is three bows to the floor. That's why I had that statue made, to teach, to teach Bingo some humility. As the great Confucius said, without feelings of respect, what is there to distinguish men from beasts?
What's this strange device? This device is definitely marvelous, Katarina. Can you guess what it is? No. I have no idea, Orlando. That's why we sent it to you. It's a scale bottle replica of Sun Su Songs' astronomical clock, which he constructed in the city of Kaifeng in... in... in 10, 1092. Wow. Time pieces as we know them didn't exist in this era. But Su Song, a Chinese polymath, came up with a device to measure time, powered by moving water and liquid mercury. Quite ingenious. Well, Chinese were ahead of time, so... Someone must have really liked our victim to present them with such an extra extravagant gift. Quite the opposite. I believe this gift is meant as a curse. You see, the Chinese words giving a clock sound exactly like the phrase for attending a funeral. It's therefore considered bad luck to give clocks or watches as gifts in Chinese culture. Oh. I'm impressed, Orlando. Without your insight, you might have missed an incredibly valuable clue. But who would send the victim such a hard binger of bad luck? Well, there are smears of makeup on the clock, the kind used by Chinese opera singers. We have one on our suspect list. Opera singers? Like Lian Wei? But why would she curse the victim? She had nothing but praise for her hon honorable benefactor. Let's ask Lian Wei about this, Katarina. Okay, let's go talk to her. <clears throat> ah, merchants! Have you found Jean Bindrus' killer yet? I'm so on edge, I can't stop eating these dry jujubes. You say you are upset by Jean Bindrus' murder? You have found this gift you gave him. Did you bear ill will towards your benefactor? Like I explained before, Jim Bingju was very generous. I didn't need my abacus to count all the money he gave to the opera house. But he thought his body made he could run the place. Bingju started exerting his influence over artistic decisions as if he knew anything about the opera. Worse still, he was trying to get rid of me. He said I was too old, that we needed younger, more attractive singers. If Big Tree had his way, today would have been my last performance. If Jim Big was a tribute to end your career, that certainly gives you a motive to end his life. The thought had crossed my mind, but as Confucius says, when anger rises, think of the consequences. I don't kill Big Tree, but I'm not sad he's dead. Oh, but it could be you. Alright, Katria, let's review the facts of this case. The good news is we found Free Sister Gordon, and she's safe for the moment. Unfortunately, she's still being held hostage, but you can't risk a rescue until her captor's killer is caught. For all we know, the princess is their next target. We learned that Santiago Sanchez is in China too, and that he met with the victim. Surely that can't be a coincidence. Opera singer Liang Wei was unhappy that the victim was trying to ruin her career. And if the Emperor had a bone to pick with the victim, claiming Jin Binger wasn't showing him proper respect. Is somebody using canyons? With so many angry suspects, who could have... Is someone trying to shoot us? Katria, duck! I already did. Is it, was that pointed to us or what? Alright, we gotta stop here. We're gonna continue playing in chapter 3. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like to this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye!